All right, guys. I hope everything working fine. Who's in the house? Let me know. Hit me up in the comments. And then get a deck of cards out to make this quality time. Quality time for yourselves, right? I'm there with you just in a minute. All right, all right, all right. Well, hey there, everybody. My name is Ot Marius, and welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the second live stream 2020. Welcome back to the card table. I hope you are all healthy and mentally stable out there. What's up, guys? Trinity is in the house. Hey, Trinity, man. How you doing? Long time no see. Awesome you tuning in. We got George Anido. Hey, Ot Marius. Hey, George. Nice to see you again. You're uploading really awesome videos lately. Enjoying your stuff. Uh, Scott Jim is in the house from Scotland. I'm broadcasting from the capital of Germany, Berlin. That is Scotty. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. Sadly, I'm getting ready to clock in here at work. So I have to catch up, catch this later. No worries. You know how it works. We're going to be live for about one hour. And today we're going to talk about double lifts, double turnovers on expert card level, right? Who got and Brue. We got um, a ourselves quite a session uh, in front of us. I'm super excited. Um, but I just have to turn uh, the music a little down here on my headphones because this is right now just too loud. So here we go. Here we go. That's great. So um, I'm planning not to talk um, too much uh, about uh, the whole madness going on around us. You know, it's everywhere in the media. You know, uh, once again, I hope you're, you're healthy and safe. Um, I'm doing just fine. You know, um, after uh, two weeks uh, coughing, <laughs> I should be all right. Last live session, you might remember that I didn't uh, show, show any other symptoms and I don't believe even uh, there was uh, an infection or something. I'm still working since I'm a social worker, you know, I'm a, a system relevant buddy <laughs> and I'm um, trying to, uh, to keep myself safe, you know, keeping my distance, washing my hands all the time. As a matter of fact, my hands are really, really... Uh, uh, dry because of the, uh, the uh, because I'm washing much uh, much more than I used to, and it uh, doesn't feel so good in my hands. And I'm also using cream now, which I never did. So, uh, but that's you know uh, just a, a minor whatever problem with so many people really you know um, uh, suffering from this whole thing going on. But today we are just not going to focus on this one. We're going to to uh, to bring our attention to the card table. Um, hopefully learning something valuable here today. Are you guys excited about um, about the double lift, double turnovers here, expert car technique? The secret lifts finally revealed on YouTube. What do you say to that? So I've been, I just had another uh, day of completely um, uh, wrecking myself, um, wait, wait, this one, wrecking myself, trying to set it all up because YouTube changed something in the back end once again and then OBS once again. 
wasn't really working. There was a little bit annoying, but I just, you know, it really took me now four hours to get everything running again. Uh, but now here I am. And um, of course, I've been through the um, whole chapter of the secret lifts here uh, in, uh, a, a, in an expert car technique by Hugard Embré. And I'm telling you, this is kind of a, this is a whole, uh, uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, valuable stuff in here, but it's also kind of a little bit of confusing. And um, I know I have people watching from a bloody beginner to um, quite experts. So um, I try to make this um, as rich as possible for everybody tuning in. So if you're a bloody beginner and you might feel a little, you know, intimidated or something, don't you worry. Um, um, you'll catch up on the material we talk about today. And also I try to, you know, just um, um, highlight the, the real... Um, uh, you know, the, the real general uh, as aspects here of the chapter. And maybe we're going to uh, dive a little bit into the mechanics of this uh, specific um, double uh, turnover with a uh, specific um, um, get ready, which we introduced to, uh, which is both something I don't um, have at my fingertips. Um, and I don't really uh, think I want to really get at my fingertips which uh, which means you know really mastering this technique because the double lifts and double turnovers that i use um they just work uh, well for me uh, and i don't th think i need to spend more time on this for for myself however there's still a lot of super valuable um uh, material and uh, very um uh, yeah, valuable lessons are also in between the lines for all of us uh, to uh, consider worth, you know, um, studying for a moment. So you guys keep on in a, uh, in a, uh, go going up and going uh, a little uh, chatty in the chat. Um, uh, Naira Smith is in the house. Um, hi, it's finally happening again. Naira Smith, it's awesome to, uh, you tuning in here today. Crazy Channel is in the house. How, how is it going? It's going great. I hope you're, you're well um, too. And then we got your comment 581 Hello, Admarius. Great to have... Uh, another session with you awesome i'm all i'm glad you guys are all tuning in so now i've got to um to get into this here today because i am a little bit um yeah i'm doing this again uh I've been. It has. It has been a beautiful autumn day with the birds singing, um, and the sun was out, and the sky was blue. No camp trails on the skies, you know. And um, I was inside all the time, <laughs> trying to set this up, and um, also, of course, preparing um, for uh, the, the chapter here for you guys. And I want to get started with a little uh, recap of um, last session because, as you remember, we are talking here about a, a special or not a special or a, uh, more of a specific um, kind of magic. We're talking about a magic um, that is mystifying um, and um, entertaining at the same time, uh, but um, uh, an, a, a style of magic where we... Um, where we play it really casual, where we do not show fancy stuff with the cards, where we only handle the card if cards are absolutely necessary. And if we handle cards, we, we um, handle them really casually, really um, uh, loosely, not to, you know, um, appear as a card sharp, as uh, somebody who's got a lot of dexterity at their fingertips so that we can really, you know, bring the magic out. This is the style Hugard and Broé are focusing on here in expert card technique, and we follow along. And of course, this sets the root um, when we talk about specific techniques, specific slides in the book. So um, let, me, let me read to you here this first chapter um, before we get started with the with the first chapter the secret lifts uh, we got here part one slides and I just want to read this for you guys it says uh, at this late date it should not be necessary to emphasize the fact that slides should never be used except a secret process in the course of a trick to demonstrate one's ability in making the pass or changing a card, for instance, is simply to destroy the mystery of such tricks in which these slides are used later on. The many new processes revealed herein for the first time have been thoroughly tested by practical magicians and will be found indispensable by all who aspire to the title of finished performers. So, really, really important when we um, dive deep into certain techniques in this um, 
series and this live stream series based on expert car technique by Hugart and Brouet. Um, we we will we do not do this to emphasize the slides or to take the slides as a means uh, um, uh, in themselves or uh, as a means without an end. We understand these slides as utility tools, which we will embed into routines, uh, which we will use to build tricks. And we are mastering the slides, not to show off with them, but to um, perform them in uh, secret. You know, so that when you do this, when you are out performing, all the effort you put in studying understanding, practicing and mastering the slides will be completely invisible. You must know this before you really get started. Otherwise, this might be a frustrating journey because you will practice or you will spend time and effort getting something, um, learning something which you will not show, <laughs> but you will use to create um, magical effects or creating illusions, right? This is really important. and. This, of course, goes um, all the way from the very beginning to the end of this book. This is the, the, the magic we are focusing on here. This is a specific um, um, approach and we follow this along. So for the moment, however, of course, we need to go into detail. We need to focus um, onto the specific handling, onto the slides, and we will go very much in detail. We will be confronted with um, with a micro uh, cosmos of micro um, emotions uh, that we have to um, to get at our f at our fingertips, to have to practice and and train our hands for, and this is a, a kind of a crazy balance, uh, which just comes naturally uh, with the whole art form. So um, on one side, we we're diving deep into a very 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 detailed an analysis of our motions of what we do but then we have to kind of you know go zoom out of it again and almost forget about it completely to be able to present a super casual handling and nothing of this um, uh, stays uh, visible you know so um french toaster uh, is um Tuning in from Washington, Washington DC, I believe. Hello from Washington DC. Believe it or not, we are not all dead yet. Yes, I think um, the panic level in uh, different areas uh, differs quite a lot. Um, you know, with the with the peak of the infections and also then a rising numbers of deaths and uh, then the media reacting to it and then also um, the governments having uh, different uh, reaction delays <laughs> to the whole situation. So I, ho I, I know that the situation in the States right now looks really bad. Um, I hope you guys, everybody watching from the States, you're safe once again and I hope um, uh, you get the situation under control uh, very soon. Um, so hopefully does the whole world so that uh, we can, um, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, try to get back to a novel life um, sooner or later. Um, just um, at least let's hope for this. So one more thing before we get started. I want to um, give a big shout out once again to all my patrons to the so-called Odd Maniacs. It's right now um, 10 legends bringing together um, uh, now almost, um, uh, 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 I don't know, 40 uh, rocks or something. This is amazing. We got Brian Prater, we got Brian Rappert, Chi Rob, Emma Nepper, um, Fredrik Barut, Hey You the Clown, Martin Schmidt, Michael J. Spradley, Sebastian Hansel, and Tom O'Brien. Guys, thank you so much for your support. There was a little coming and going lately. I believe Tom O'Brien and Emma Napper are the, uh, the newest art maniacs and some dropped out, but no worries uh, there um, because uh, I guess this is just normal on Patreon. I just want to thank everybody who supported me at one point in time, um, who's supporting me now and who will be supporting me in the future. Um, you are really making a difference with your pledge. Um, you are really um, helping me, uh, keeping me the, keeping my motivation up and keeping me going here on the platform. This is rocking amazing. So guys, thank you so much. Big shout out uh, to you. Um, and of course, I have um, links in the info cards 
in your right corner up above and in the info box down below down below uh, for everything related i've got a tutorial se series uh, up and running on my channel on double lifts double turnovers everything you need to know and also i opened a um new channel in our discord server on our discord server everything related double lifts double turnovers where you guys can meet um to uh, get uh, knowing each other and of course um discussing now this uh, the whole thing uh, maybe also you know helping yourselves out a little bit i also link those tutorials there uh, we got now Vernon Ursenbach now. I like the clean shaven look. Thank you so much. Uh, we established established that uh, already um, last session. Everybody is happy with the uh, with the Marius look. This is great. I'm happy. So uh, we can focus on the cards now. Um, let's 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 just get get in with a little bit of reading here, and. Um, So, um, the double lift is uh, to say, the lifting of two cards as one is one of the most useful modern card slides. Many methods have been devised, but all of them entail a certain preliminary movement for the pure uh, for the purpose of getting ready or set for the slide. And this movement must be covered by misdirection. Now, Hugard and Bruy, now, um, uh, you know, going into kind of a... Um, mm, explanation for the for the um uh, get ready they, they are presenting in the book here um as if it wouldn't need misdirection so much and when i read this um i was like kind of not satisfied really because the ways i'm catching a um um a double to get ready if i do that <laughs> um they work really well and the misdirection needed in real life situations are absolutely not a big deal here. Whereas when I go into the, or when I read into the, I'm so sorry guys, I just don't have any control. When I read into the get ready, we are uh, learning here in this book, this um, is just another thing you have to learn. And for me personally, I don't really see the, the, uh, the benefit so much when it comes only for um, uh, getting ready for a simple double lift. And it might be different when we're talking triples or quadruples, no, qu how do you call this? Quadruples. Um, but for doubles, mm, I don't really know. Now, we will take a look a little bit here at this uh, way of catching a, um, a, a double, getting ready for a double. It's quite an interesting technique, but it's also kind of a workaround to get into a pinky break. And this is usually what we try to achieve uh, if we're working with the get ready, right? So there are two ways of um, um, performing a double lift, uh, something where you do catch a pinky break and usually it's done with a thumb riffle at the inner short side, just simply like that. You get for two cards, you put the flash of the pinky here in the corner, right? And then you're done. And this is something that you, of course, do in an off bit. You tilt your hands naturally while you chat with the people. It's just, it's just like that. It's not a big deal at all. Of course, I've got a tutorial up and running to show you this in detail, but this is the motion. And you know, you chat with the people, you, um, whatever it is, you uh, produce a, f uh, uh, do a little false uh, uh, shuffling, or you, you control a card to the top. And while you chat with your people, you catch this pinky break and you are ready for uh, turning the card over just in that manner, um, which is the, the version of the double turnover. I consider the best working solution and um, you see this performed um, by my many uh, magicians um, throughout the world. Now there is a difference here, of course, in the handling. You very often see performers, you know, really going tight on the cards and then f flipping the card over in this manner. And um, just to improve your double, right there is learn to, to turn the card over in a really natural manner. You won't believe 
um, you just give it a little bit of, uh, of uh, you know, of practice and then you will get a feel for it. Um, you know, for the cards, also, of course, depends on the quality of the cards, how sticky are there. It, when it comes to doubles, uh, a brand new deck or a, a slidey deck, of course, makes thing a little more difficult. But here in this case, you know, um, just learn um, to, 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 to handle the cards loosely as you turn them over and the whole thing becomes so much uh, better looking. Once again, once again, and I can't stress this enough, the, the key goal here is to, with all double lifts, all double turnovers, and doesn't matter what kind of variation you use, um, you are not making a fuss about it, right? You do not, you do not emphasize the moment of turning a card over, for example, here, catching a um, um, uh, going for a um, strike, uh, double turnover. I wouldn't emphasize turning the card over at all. No matter what I do, I just turn the cards over because I just do this for showing the, the, the face of the card, the value of the card. And I want to keep this as natural, um, as uh, unsuspicious as possible, of course. And this should be, this should be your main objective, to get down a handling. Um, that that does the job for you and of course you can and you need to test different styles and different variations how to pick up the card how to catch uh, how to get ready and so on or to get ready at all at a certain level but at the end of the day if you manage to turn the card over to turn the cards over loosely you know with a natural feel you um you will deceive, you will fool and you will achieve your goal of displaying two or more cards as one, which is what you want to do with this whole technique, you know, to, to proceed with your trick. Uh, Werner Rosenberg writes, Guy Werner would say uh, to turn over one card over and over again until turning over one card is so natural, it is done without thinking about it. And then start doing a double in exactly the same way and timing. The secret is to make it look so natural that a spectator cannot tell the difference between how you turn over one or two cards together. And this is just true. Let me put this up here. Let's go to a... Um, to the point where people can read this here, go, going to the side here a little bit. Wern Usenbach puts it very beautifully there, um, uh, uh, paraphrasing the professor. And this is just true, right? This is just true. And this is basically all you gotta know. And of course, you can go, you can, uh, you can uh, be fancy, you can put add-ons, you can uh, put, um, um, uh, convinces to it, but all of this is not necessary. You don't need it. You don't need it. For example, I like I like this. Um, all right, I, I gotta go down here. I can't do this. I like this um, one. I use it very often, which is very practical. And once again, I got tutorials up and running for this. I um, get, get ready here at the outer um, left corner. I tilt the cards like that, and I can use this little snap as a convincer, which also helps me lifting the card up into my face. So if I perform it, I would do it like this. You know, I show the card like this, and I snap it to the top. So I get this little snap. And now when I bring it down, I immediately get ready to just turn the cards over again. In, in a manner and I'm done but that is that is already pretty fancy you know a lot, a lot of add-ons and this is something I would only use you know when I uh, there's a larger crowd when I um when I uh, uh when I work in a close-up uh, situation of course I just want to turn the card over and then over again and then I have established the the, the card the value of the card right um, Sebastian Hansen right? I tried to perform the double turnover the same way as you, uh, you, you just showed. I'm just wondering what uh, do you think of uh, the master push-off by Andy Glad uh, Gladwin? Um, I, um, I don't know all the doubles out there. The master push-off, um, uh, we are confronted here with a, a push-off version also in expert card technique, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Um, I was, I was here, the double lift in action. Here's something I thought it was really well, but what I just said is, um, also was also paraphrasing who got in Bruea. The action in all instances, however, should be smooth and co uh, continuous. 
approximating a natural turnover. There is no real reason why the performer should watch the cards and there is no real reason why the performer should watch the cards and this uh, he should refrain from doing as this indifference towards the turning over gives to it the naturalness which is absolutely vital to successful conjuring. Again, uh, we're talking about casualty naturalness. The double lift should be kept in re uh, reserve for tricks in which it is indispensable. We also read pretty much here very close uh, to read. So don't overdo it. Don't use the double lift over and over and over. Keep it in reserve. Keep it. Use it only for the things where it's absolutely needed, where it's indispensable. And when you do it, perform it as natural as possible. And um, these are the key elements. Um, you need to wrap your head around otherwise uh, you easily lose um, track and you e easily get uh, you know overloaded with all the options there and I I'm telling you if um, I'm asking you guys right now just uh, name drop all the different variations of double turnovers double lifts out there uh, you could you could go for quite a while don't you um, and uh, and that is uh, that's okay but that's not that's not uh, um, that's not uh, um, helping if you want to get a double lift working in your hands for actually using it, right? So once again, should the double nor should the double lift be a plaything with which to show your skill with cards? It cannot be emphasized too strongly that it is a secret subterfuge which should be used only as a legitimate slide with which to obtain results not otherwise possible. So, this is the key notion here. So, we have, when we talk about double lifts, double turnovers, we have the face of getting ready. We have the face of actually turning the lift uh, um, over or uh, um, picking up the lift, um, lifting it up, the double, uh, and... Um, with this in this phase we we have the whole um handling of the cards as something to practice and you got to keep this in mind that um you of course at the end you want to have all of this blend together in one smooth motion but it really helps uh, at the beginning to kind of um uh, look at this at se as, as separate working blocks so let's take a really uh, a short look here into the into the get ready, you know, into the get ready, catching a, a, a double, um, catching a pinky break and double. So as I just showed you, there's this version where you simply um, roll over with the thumb of your fingertip and you can do this from the side. I'm so sorry. Wait. You can do this from the, from the side. You can do this a little bit like this. It really doesn't matter so much as long as you practice this to do this in an offbeat and which is just a little tilt of your of your um, hand you know here this of course looks really dirty really suspicious because I'm sitting down and why would I do this but when I'm standing you know I'm lifting my hands anyway so I just get catch the pinky break I'm in my position and I'm really good to go and from here I just you know turn the cards over naturally there's of course this other version uh, getting a, um, a, a pinky break here by pushing the cuts over and also for this one I've got a tutorial series this is how it looks exposed now when you do this uh, standing you can do this with your with the whole arm tilting down right you can do this uh, with a, a wrist kill or you can even do this in a motion where you square up the cards in one motion getting your pinky break underneath the two cards and you're good to go now in expert car technique we are confronted with another version and here we are in this um in this uh, area where magicians talk more to magicians than to uh, uh um to somebody somebody else uh, this is just uh, seems to be um something that has been around the 1940s something uh, new and uh, therefore an unknown to most uh, magicians out there information probably wouldn't spread so fast uh, so this is kind of a uh, first reveal here about this time, a new technique catching a, um, a pinky break for a double or a triple, um, a, v a version that is um, even more subtle, that needs less misdirection. So um, it's supposed to be much better. Now, if you took, take a look at this, 
it is kind from for my taste really a workaround so what we do um we um we we come with our right hand from the top we bend the cards here right you see this this you know this bending motion here do you ever give this a try right here and um, in this motion we are going to to use our um second finger from the from the left hand to uh, to to catch the break and the thing is that you can almost like a pinky count here it's now a second finger count when you bend the cards here you can you can um control the cards jumping from the tip of the second finger this at least is how they explain it and now we are supposed since we got it here i got it now right there now i am su supposed to transfer this into a pinky break and in uh, into a pinky break and this is quite an operation here where i am using i believe the thumb to push the card a little to the side and then get the pinky and then i'm, I'm in my pole position is that correct No, 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 it's drop the ball of the left thumb upon the top of the outer half, the deck and raise the right thumb at the inner end. This action levels up the inner end of the cards, the second fingertip acting as a fulcrum. Insert the left little fingertip in the break, thus transfer to the inner right corner. Again, run the tip, um, again, do the whole thing under squaring up the cards and you got your pinky break. So, I'm in a situation now, and here's the thing where I say, why would I do this? Why would I go through all this motion, you know, all this micro motion of first catching the, you know, basically doing here this, this motion, then having, counting the cards, right? And then transferring the break from the second finger to, to the, to the, to the pinky when I just can do the whole thing in one motion without, without any worries, right? Now it's a matter of taste. You could now argue just because at Marius you don't have this at your fingertips or, or, or already right now. You don't see how much better it is. But I just see here the workaround right now. I have a technique at my hands that works perfectly fine with me. And since I'm not out there fooling magicians, uh, but uh, uh, entertaining laymen, um, I uh, I don't really see uh, uh, see here the the trouble going through this uh, learning this really. However, um, this might might be something which uh, which I will find interesting in a different in another scenario with an, with a different goal, you know, um, which I don't have right now. And then uh, you know, it's good that it's here, and maybe I get back to it at one point. Now we are confronted with the actual lift, and this here is now. A really really interesting situation however because now we got our pinky break down here we are in the right grip with our left hand and we are now supposed to bring the left outer corner as a double to the side this is the next basic challenge here right and again we are getting quite a nasty workflow of micro motions explained only to realize a little bit later that there is a magical version here which the autos don't know themselves is why it is working actually which gets you pushing over two cards as one without the whole workaround of a pinky break so what is what technique we got here and then we realize when we go to the next chapter, the second deal, that there are techniques of pushing off two cards as one without even this working. So now a beginner might be confused. Michael, what's going on? What am I going to use here? And now you will find um, and realize that this really is not something 
um, written for somebody who's holding a deck of cards for the first time. <laughs> uh, this is something where you say, oh, I actually basically know really well how cards handle and how um, and what I'm doing with them already. Now I'm giving this a try because I have a really use case scenario for this. Now I'm really intrigued of giving this a try here. And of course, you have seen me practicing the pushover um, uh, second dealing here, which um, was um, the um, Erdnase. Uh, basically, I, I built this up from Erdnase, and I, I, I got decent results there. And the thing is, what I thought was really funny, when we read here in a railroad, uh, in, uh, in an expert car technique about the, uh, the pushover second deal, that this method has been out there for quite a while. However, there have been only few who really mastered it. And if you have asked those guys how they do it, they wouldn't really know how to explain it. Because the micro uh, uh, movements, the micro uh, muscles and the, the sensibility of the fingertips become so delightful, so sensitive that you start lacking words how to explain it. But basically what, basically what you are doing is in a very sensitive balance of pressure, of the right positioning of the cards in your hands, pushing two cards over as one, which is the absolute goal. Now at the moment where I realized this is true, I I just skipped all of all of this in this book basically and I said I just go directly into mastering how to push two cards as one. Now let me try to explain you in my words how you do this. And this is really sensitive stuff here. Now we're really talking about things that are hardly to be explained. First of first thing is the balance of the deck in your hand. And it is pretty much it's pretty much in the lower third of the of the of the cards. But not really in the center, but a little bit to the left from the center, holding the cards in your hands. So it's the base, the very base of your index finger which nails it at this position. This is where it's balanced. And when you grip the cards, you have your index lying at the outer right corner, you have the second finger lying at the outer right corner from the long side, let me, let me show you, let me uh, show you like this, and you have the cards tilt a little bit like this, that's how you have them in your hands, and then it is, a f it, it is a very delicate pressure which goes down with the thumb, so you're press pressing down and pressing to the side. And it is pressure that goes down onto the cards and a tiny little bit of flesh of the tip of the thumb that takes the second card away. And this enables you to take the two cards as one. Now, at this moment, I fooled myself and I thought I just had one card with the ace on top. <laughs> this is how it would look like, right? Now, you do not practice this standalone as a double. That is not possible. You practice this with a, uh, a second deal. Because you need to push the cards over in the same manner I don't know how many times. And it is an understatement here in the um, expert uh, cut technique that you do not need to practice a lot for this. You need to practice a lot for this. Now, you really have to ask yourself, do you want to do this? <laughs> now, I decided for myself, I, I, I'm going through the pain. I just want to do this. But there's absolutely no need for that. You see, this is a reputation maker. This is magicians for magicians. This is like this guy pushed a specific technique so to the limit that um, colleagues acknowledge the level of elegancy 
um, out there. <laughs> For layman, it does not matter. <laughs> because one thing is just as good as the other. I'm just sharing this with you because I don't want you to waste time on practicing something, what you don't need, and you will lose out on a lot of fun and um, building up um, courage and self-esteem, performing beautiful magic with the best, with a working double turnover that works. So, now let's talk about handling the cards, handling the double, respectively turning the double over. In the scenario here, in the book, we are confronted with something, once again, I, that which alienates me. So we, 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 have the, we have the double out in a manner that we can reach for the outer corner. Who got in Brouet, they are now, um, they are now suggesting this one. We're coming from here with the, with the palm up, with the second finger going underneath the cards, the third, the, the index finger uh, securing here the, the, the short side a little bit and the thumb um, pressing downwards. So we're clipping the cards between second finger and um, uh, thumb and the index controls it here a little bit. Now, this is how they say how to turn the card over. And for me, it's like... <laughs> No, <laughs> this is now, this is how I don't expect anybody turning a card over, right? And really naturally, I, I would do it like this. I would come from the other side, you know, because you've seen this, you've seen this, uh, the stealing technique, right? Going down. Looks a really cool, very simple way of t dealing the cards. So I, I would expect a double um, coming here from this side as well, right? Like this, and then turning the card over, which makes it look... Uh, it's uh, just mo so much more natural. And now we have here, we have here, um, uh, and I was like, this confused me. I wouldn't expect it uh, uh, here on this level uh, of expert car technique, something like this. And then um, who got in Bray, they're, 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 backing, uh, they're backing it up here and they're saying, you know, this is just a matter of taste and you just can do it the way I just showed you. It's written here with only two cards to control the double lift is made with the hands in almost any position before the body or at the left side. With the pack in re regular dealing position or with the outer end pointing obliquely downwards. The cards being turned over are grasped either as given in the previous instructions. So this would be, this would be, um, uh, 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 this would weird word. <laughs> um, uh, in the previous instructions, where was I? Or may instead be grasped at the outer right corner with the thumb below and the fingers above, the turnover then being similar to the deal in the stuck poker. The hands may be held motionless or kept slightly in motion to the left as the turnover is made, right? So um, uh, this motion here. So when, when I come from here, turning over like this. Now a little bit, a little tip here. When you turn a double over, and it, do, it doesn't it doesn't really matter from which side or if you come from the center even, it is always kind of um, a mixture between clipping the cards really tightly between thumb and one or another finger, and giving extra um, stability um, with the other fingers here at the outer corner at the long side. For example, in the best working double turnover in my opinion so we catch a break in the simplest way imaginable or use any method you'd like to we come with the with the second finger here from the downside now we go with the index finger stabilize the whole thing at the outer long side then we clip the cards between second and thumb and the ring finger stabilizes the the inner side now in this grip i can easily turn the cards over without panicking of losing control over them cards. I can hold them for a while, I can turn them over like this, and et voila. So we have these two challenges, catching the break, getting hold of the cards in the right grip, 
And then the third challenge, handling them as loosely, as naturally as possible. I do think that any other way of turning the card over, but turning them over like the pages of a book is um, fooling around, messing around with something that's already perfect. Because that's how people expect a card to be turned over just like that. Now, and if you want to get rid of the pinky break, you know, you just have to learn to push two cards as one to the side, one way or another, which is a workaround and which takes some kind of practice. And um, there is also this other version where you catch the, uh, where you get the, when you get the, the, the break with, this, with the second finger or even the third finger, and you can push the cards, bend the cards against, against the palm of the hand. And when you, uh, when you pull the hands then out there like this, you can pull them as one. See that? This motion here. But also you see my hand is shaking because this is a really, really sensitive, very delicate muscle thing going on here. And I didn't practice this. So, so the, the hand is such such shaking. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so there are many variations, right? Going for going, get, getting there. Uh, and it's entirely up to you what you're working with. Let's see what's going on in the chat. I haven't been looking at the chat for quite a while now. So, um, Awesome. We got currently 19 uh, folks watching and um, let, let's go crazy. It was until the master push up has good thinking behind it, but think the thumb bends too much in order to get the double. So very detailed description here of some specific technique. Yes, it kind of feels unnatural. I was just curious because it's uh, an improved version of the pushover. We can find it in the, we can find in this book here. Hey, what's good at maniacs, uh, Bavish Agrel in the house. Um, Sebastian Hans right. Andy Gladwin also told the story behind the master pushover in the Shah Magic live stream on Sunday. He said they one would consider the pushover in card expert as non-working. Uh, all right. So we are. Uh, so I'm not. Um, uh, but wait, I, we haven't been talking about the pushover here in card uh, an expert. Not so far because uh, because uh, it comes with the it comes with the. With the double lift, right? Oh no, the one hand push off. But this is this magical, the special te technique here. So, anyway, and then we got um. Okay, long story short, the expert at the card table pushover and Diamond's judgment inspired the master pushover. All right, so we got this thing going on, the slides involve, you know, uh, uh, there's an evolution happening, got to catch up on the thing, you know, <laughs> and f uh, finding the, the best solution for, for, our, uh, for our situation. Mm. I think it's more for an extension reference. According to Harry Reiser, the whole of the first chapter should be credited to Charlie Miller. All right, Charlie Miller is a big name um, uh, and a lot of material by Charlie Miller went into this book. They all they say this in the, in the introduction of the book. Um, the, the reason why they say you don't need to practice a lot is because they want to brag and act like they have godly powers over skills. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, but yeah, because, you know, um, actually I don't practice at all. You know, I'm just pretending to, um, uh, you know, uh, trying to get some... Uh, traffic going on here on YouTube. <laughs> and then we got Miss Mac 822. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. How are you doing? The card trick teacher. Ah, oh, lovely. Awesome. You're tuning in, man. What's up? You're still uploading on the, on the tube. You're still, uh, still at it. Crazy channels, right? That way to turn a card was meant to look similar, like a stud deal. Right. Um, wow, Miss Mac, the great um, uh, Peter Lysowski uh, uh, enjoys what's going on here. <laughs> great, the Catholic teacher, hi, sir. Great so far, Marius, Herr Loggi, awesome. You're there with us. Haven't realized this yet. Um, amazing. And then Crazy Channel said, that's the one I used to do before changing into the push-off. After a while, you can get the pressure down easily. All right. Uh, which one, Crazy Challengers? Um, uh, Wit von Wit, I worked with the setup 
to double lift for a week and uh, feel fairly comfortable with it. Which setup, with for Wit? I don't know what you're talking about, guys. I've lost you there because I was so in my own uh, um, train of thoughts. Um, we got currently 21 people watching. I'm super excited. And we're in for 48 minutes and 15 seconds. We tried to keep this for 60 minutes today. So um, uh, so I got I, I, I to gotta keep on uh, uh, rolling with this one here. Just... Um, just um, uh, the 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 push off thing. I just want to give this a very short try. So what we got here, we got the um, proper grip. We got pressure here from the top, and we got pressure down from the pinky. And then we are supposed to create a situation where when I keep when I push the top card to the side, I automatically um, push two cards to the side. Um, and um, I, I, I don't feel it right away, but it would be, it's a little bit cocky what I'm doing here right now, because usually it takes some hours um, uh, of, of getting the neck out of, of the secret and then, you know, finding it. And I think, yeah, I see where this might be going to. For now, maybe it's too much pressure I'm bringing down here. I'm having trouble. No. Right now, it's what's happening. It's like, see, see this? When I do it like this, I just, you know, lift up here the top card. And from there, maybe going for, uh, for a more natural take of the whole thing. For me, that ain't that that ain't that doesn't do it because I've already practiced so long just going for this um, for this uh, um, push off here. But I read somewhere with the flesh here where we work with the flesh. I thought I found I found this be, to be true in my own hands. So this is now um, the the lift off after um, getting ready and having the pinky break here on page five. Move the thumb to the right and inward, describing a small segment of an arc, taking with it the cards to be lifted as one card, figure three. So we are showing you the figure here for a moment. That's the figure, right? We have a nice pinky break. Where is this? A nice pinky break here. And then we have a buckled in thumb and we push to the side, kind of what they say in an arc. Um, none, note that the fingertips are above the top of the pack. As the thumb moves the cards to the right in an inward arcing acting, these fingers tip to the right to allow the cards to pass over them. The remainder of the pack being held firmly in place by the inward pressure of the left li little fingertip. The inner left corner of the cards pivots under the base of the thumb, the inward arcing pressure of the thumb tip forcing this corner into the flesh of the palm, thus holding the cards in perfect reg register. This is true for the way I, I do this when I push the cards forward here in this manner, with only bringing the mind amount of pressure down to the cards, and to the side, um, the 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 cards in the in a very um, you know pure bottom of the of the base of the thumb go in there and um, kind of you know gets gets stabilized there, pushed together, which keeps the cards in place when I just um, um, take them off, right? Um, Turn the right hand palm upwards and seize the cards at the outer. By the way, I wanted to read this with the flesh. I don't find this now. Where is this? So they're speaking here about this uh, little amount of flesh, which which takes the ca card away w uh, from the thumb. And um, I found this to be very true. So when you just you know rest, uh, have the cards uh, rest on your hand, and you just you know, push to the side over, just with the pressure from the top, you know, you will find that there is a point, a pressure point, where you take two cards to the side. And by the way, by the way. That's why it is tricky to practice the um, the strike double, right? This is where you would uh, do it like this. You lift the hands up and you push the card to the side. You push the card to the side. 
Let me give you a close up here. Um, you push the card to the side, and then you 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 take the the the, the second from the, from the top right away. In this motion now if you practice this to get this you practice basically the and right now i have trouble doing this because i practice the opposite because you practice here to just push the top card just give enough pressure to to um <laughs> um to push the top card aside and and uh, you know and holding just a light grip just a slide so that you can easily slide the second from the top out there with your thumb, right? So what you do is like this. I can't explode it here. You slide the, the top card to the side without having the second from the top move. Now your thumb comes here to the corner and slides the second from the top out of there, right? <laughs> now, if you practice to push two over, you need to apply a different amount of pressure from the top. So you, you need to apply amount of pressure to, on the top so that it looks like this from the top, that you kind of spread the cards on the top. And you want to balance the amount of pressure that you get two cards rolling, right? So the amount of pressure needs to be as strong that two cards start sliding and the other remain in a position. Can you see this here? Maybe I use, um, use a corner deck. right so this is one card not moving now a little more pressure two cards start moving right and no matter how how balanced your pressure is you will always find that that this one card stays behind and that another card here uh gets loose as well so you want to use the flesh of the thumb a little bit you know to help out the, the second from the top to, to, to carry it away with you. And even if it's not 100% aligned here, you can fix this when you come to turn him over, right? Just like that. And um, I didn't bother, by the way, also then, um, oh my God, practicing um, pushing those two cards then to the side in order to go like this, because I usually um, I go in this uh, manner where I just take the cards where I actually to take a double lift pick up a double lift bring them to the side and i hold them in this position right and i'm now pushing down with my thumb and my tips of the other fingers they protrude over the edges of the whole pack giving this this bent upwards motion so i really can uh, securely hold the cards and from here i can come from here go from the inner corner from the outer corner from the side i can lift them cards up like this i can lift them up like this i can do whatever i want with the cards right another little thingy um we got currently 20, uh, 22 people watching. I'm super, um, super hyped. I think that's amazing. I hope you enjoy the content. I hope um, you're learning something and I hope you're making this quality, quality time for yourselves. Also practicing your thing while you do. So um, uh, uh, that's what I used to do before changing into the push-off. After a while, you can get the pressure down easily. I work with the setup. Okay, now I asked the guy, the one described in chapter one, the setup before the turnover. Okay. That's what you used. Um, God, do you have this at your fingertips? I would really like to see this in motion. If you want to, and if you have the, um, if you have the equipment, uh, uh, shoot a. On, uh, so could you shoot this and then um, share this on our Discord um, uh, channel? I would really love to see this in uh, in motion. Uh, maybe I'm missing something here. By the way, this is a really really cool thing um, in the in the times we're living. If you're confronted with a specific technique, you know. Try to find somebody who performs it, not somebody who gives a shitty tutorial on it, but somebody who really mastered it. And look how it's supposed to not look uh, to look like uh, to be invisible, you know. And then you get you get this idea and say maybe this is something really worth putting the effort in 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 it, right? Um, 
you should use a border deck for the one-handed setup push of uh, Crazy Channelers, right? Yes, a one-handed deck here is uh, more uh, forgiving than a borderless deck, of course, when we when we talk about doubles, right? What's up, man? Thought we are on uh, at two, uh, Aiden. I don't know what happened there. We are always doing this at eight, uh, but I'm glad you found us. Are you not a fan of bicycle dads? R r rarely see them with you. Well, yeah, I got bicycles. Got a bicycle here. Working a little routine with the bicycle. A bit one with rides. Yeah, I try. That would be amazing. Um, so, guys, we got a Discord. Everybody watching right now, we got a Discord. Links in the info box. Everybody's welcome to join the conversation. Um, um, so far, only really, really nice people uh, joined in. Really respectful, helpful uh, people from all um, levels, from uh, uh, beginners to uh, qu quite advanced players. And I really enjoyed this. From all over the world, from the United States, Belgium, um, I don't know, um, Austria, Germany, um, uh, 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 Spain, whatever, I don't know. I've, I had people here from uh, watching from all over the globe. This is really, really great. You should use a border deck not to only because it's more forgiving, but because the tutorial in the book gives reference to pressure points in terms of borders. Ah, I see. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah. Um, the thing about the pressure points, though, um, it really, really varies in the hands, and it really, really varies with um, um, with with experience. <laughs> Can I put it like that? I just want to talk a little bit more about um, about uh, the handling of the cards before we before we're done here today. Like. Um, Like when you come to um, push two cards for that one and you turn him over like this, for example, what I really like is to get them into a grip like this here, where I have the cards clip between thumb and between um, second finger of the left hand. This also helps me to control a card here with my, with my index finger at the outer short side from this position. And from here, I have a lot of options to go for turning the card over. And you might want to try practice this, you know, just to, to jazz around with these two cards and, and, and handle them really chaotic, you know, just try to just try to get a feel for this double. How, what, what can you do with the cards? What can't you do with the cards? And you will find eventually that um, a certain amount of pressure between the cards, the fingers you clip them cards, you know, does a pretty decent job. And and, and there are positions that, that differ so that you can, for example, um, show a double like this, right? Uh, and now I was flashing here and it makes a really good impression. You can go for uh, something like this bring it in this position, you can hold it here, bring it back like this, you can um, uh, drop the one card um, to go into your routine or whatever, um, uh, whatever works for you. Also, what I like to do is to, and it doesn't matter if I go for a strike or from this uh, with a pinky break, I to catch the cards with my thumb to get into this grip, right? And um, don't, don't you worry about um, not uh, aligning 100% um, because First of all, you're just in a phase of practice of getting a feel for the cards. And also you are getting in a real life situation much better results with a really casual handling than with a stiff handling. And you know, when you drop the cards on top you and you hold them easily, you can really clean up this, you know, little uh, flashes easily. And it's when it comes to performing more a, um, a matter of nerves, you know, how you play it. But always aim, and I just can't stress this enough, for a really loose and really casual handling. Now, for the situation of catching a pinky break, I really like this version here, where you push two cards forward and you get your break. And I really advise you also to practice this one before everything else, uh, because uh, this uh, is a technique which will come in very handy in many, many other situations. For example, and this is Royal Road to Card Magic, by the way, now uh, here once again. Um, when you push one card over, right, 
and you uh, and you turn it over in the same motion, uh, you can catch a pinky break, um, the second card from the bottom, and you get ready. You go get ready for any kind of um, uh, tricks that um, desire that kind of um, pickup, you know, and it comes really handy when you're working also with double backers or something. So what's happening once again here, so you're basically pushing two cards to the side, you're taking one, as you turn it over, you catch the pinky break. Now I completely failed here when you tried to do this slowly, but it would be something like this, right? You square them up and you got your pinky break, you got the two cards already, and then you can um, perform your um, um, your magic, right? It's, it's really useful. One more thing. One more thing. Do not think that the material in uh, the Royal Road to Card Magic is less valuable or less important uh, than the material in this book. This book was published before the Royal Road to Card Magic and it's more like a collection of the latest stuff in the 1940s. It's more magicians addressing magicians trying to get every um, everybody on board with the latest coolest slides and the royal road to card magic was published 1951 first published and the same authors who who got embrace they took all the uh, they took everything away they cut everything loose they didn't they did they, they did not uh, um, deem um a hundred percent necessary and valuable uh, as repertoire for the novice to get into the magic, to get to get the thing really going. So, always keep this in mind. We are just adding on here. We are just analyzing. We are studying a little bit deeper. We're going diving deeper into the material. Um, maybe improving our handling big time or just, you know, putting it uh, to the side, maybe for later. But of course, or always just, you know, improving our understanding of what is happening. And what you can see here, and this is true for every slide you learn, we are dealing with super, super micro motions, micro routines of our hands, muscle memory we have to build up. And there's always and always and again this point of our practice where we reflect on what is going on in our hands, where we do really analyze every tiny microscopical thing that's going on, where are the pressure points, where, how am I holding it here. Um, we adjust, we redefine our grips, and then we keep on um, practicing to get the whole thing into a flow of motions. And depending on who you are and depending on what you want to achieve, you will not um, dive deeper than to a certain point and with a certain material because there are so many other things. You can spend uh, countless hours of quarantine with, you know? <laughs> you know, there are so many other techniques, even when it comes to cards, but there are also ropes and there are balls and coins and lots of shit going on, right? So we got Jamie Earls. Hello from uh, Louisville, Kentucky tuning in. Hello, Jamie. We're coming to an end here. We got one hour and six uh, minutes going on. Um, I have the feeling that I have been terribly uh, 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 confusing today, but that is okay. Um, that happens. Uh, I don't know. I believe next session uh, we are going to talk about. Um, let's see. Let me see what I what I plan for next session. Um, uh, where is it? Where am I? Dashboard YouTube. Let's see what I plan for last session. Next session. Um. That's right. So um, we are um, uh, we are proceeding with um, with the past twenty first of April. We are going to take a look at the past.
Once again, this is, I don't know, um, I have also a whole tutorial series on the pass out there. We also did several live sessions on the pass, but yet again, I'm really excited about what this book or, or, or what at this point in time, who got and bro had to say about the pass. I believe there's an in-depth description of the, um, of the invisible turnover pass in there. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna go, um, full throttle into this material. Um, now, if you guys want to um, uh, keep on, you know, doing your thing, um, I would really, 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 really enjoy it. If you um, hit me with some uh, comments or with some um, um, questions or whatever it is, or sh share some information, if you want to share in our Discord, everything related, double lift. Maybe you want to uh, show your take on the handling or your favorite double uh, lift. Go there to Discord, upload it there, or give a link, uh, give a link there, and you will help all the others in, uh, in our community. Um, and maybe you will get a, a, a ton of um, awesome feedback because uh, as I read um, uh, your your um, uh, discussions, uh, uh, when I whenever I read your discussions uh, on Discord, I'm I'm super uh, super excited. You guys know a lot of stuff and a lo know a lot of about magic you are in the middle of your own learning process and i'm really privileged and i'm really proud of you guys tuning in here and uh taking my word for um uh, my advice for any good um uh, i really don't take this um uh, easy it really means a lot to me and by the way uh, and with this i want to finish here today um do not take um everything i say uh, uh, for granted or as the last wisdom here in this thing, this is just my take, my reflection at the point of my understanding of the art form. Um, but take it as an inspiration, as an input for your own thought process, for your own um, learning and studies and an analysis of what, you, what, what you're doing. And, um, and then hopefully together we progress, we get better with what we love doing. And um, at the end of the day, um, we are doing all this to become better magicians, which means to entertain people with um, amusing, exciting and stunning um, uh, tricks with cards. And of course, we only want to deliver eye candy, you know, and in this case, what we're studying right now, that means we are turning over a two cards or three cards as one and in the spectator's mind will not be a single question about the card being one card. Never, not, it will not occur. And if you manage that, um, you have, you've won the race, you know? So, um, You guys uh, getting back to me. Beste Grüße von Shirop. Kids sind gerade anstrengend. Wäre gerne dabei gewesen. Shirop, no worries. D uh, vielen Dank für deine Unterstützung. Um, vielen Dank für dein Feedback. Um, uh, du bist immer gerne willkommen und du weißt ja, das uh, läuft hier uh, weiter und du kannst dir das auch noch im Nachhinein angucken. A little, a little bit speak in German here. Uh, Flying V said, no, you were not confusing. You were very clear. That is, uh, um, I hope so. <laughs> Herr Logi, the triple thumb, amazing. Wit von Wit, yes, the Discord is very fun and helpful. Lots of uh, people, awesome. Chi Rob, Otmanix, Profis, everybody. Nairo says, that's true. We all try to help each other and grow together. Awesome. A Aiden says, thanks, man. We'll rewatch and share always. And yeah, that's it for today, guys. You know the drill. You keep on practicing. You give it some time and it will come to you. Hit uh, smash triple combo, like, subscribe, and notification bell icon. And in the meantime, rest assured, more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very, very soon. And now I realize there was no music in the background all the time. Why? Why did, 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 did YouTube do this to me again? Now we're going away. See you around next time, guys. Thank you so much. Odd Mario's magic. Like and subscribe.